Here we are. It's also fairly close to where I've been staying. It looks really nice! <laughs> Not at all. It, just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. That's Paimon's specialty! Paimon can tell you stories next time! Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah, it'll be pretty hard to relax and enjoy the festival if Dia's constantly hovering over you, right? Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. Have a great night. It's a deal! Good night, Dunyarzad! I may be too excited to fall asleep tonight. See you tomorrow. Paimon's starting to really look forward to the Sub-Zero Festival, too! Will there be lots of yummy food? Oh, no, no. Thinking about food is just gonna keep Paimon up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go inside, Traveler! Go meet Dunyarzad right away. Traveler, Paimon, I've been waiting for you two. Dunyarzad, we must have overslept a little bit. <laughs> Not at all. I arrived early. Oh, today is finally here. I must cherish every moment as if it were gold. You've worked so hard for this day. You gotta enjoy it to the fullest. <laughs> you know it. Oh, it's just that, um, as expected, I had some trouble falling asleep last night. I'm hoping my body won't be too much of an issue today. Well, but shall we? Let's start with the stalls over there. Many vendors came out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. Let's go give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket? Oh, sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. <laughs> they all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! This is... a stall offering foods from the Haftmewa feast. Oh, you could tell straight away. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Mushrooms, flowers, and all kind of fruit? It's all vegetarian stuff! Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. So, what's the Haftmewa feast you mentioned just now? It's another sub festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukashaba mushrooms, Nilo Pala lotuses, Sumeru roses, Sunsetias, Kapalatas, Hara fruits, and Zaytun peaches. So, the sub festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. We just use the seven foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait! vegetarian food to represent the Dendro Archon. Then wouldn't the Pyro Archon's festival be full of food like roasted fowl, juicy meatballs, grilled steak? Oh, Traveler, we have to go to Natlon as soon as possible! <laughs> I hope your wish comes true one day, Paimon. Thanks! Alright, how about we 
also check out some of these other stalls. Dear customers, would you like to try your hand at alchemical divination? What's alchemical divination? Those two things sound like they'd be fun to try together. Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. It is said to be a mysterious craft invented by none other than Lesser Lord Kusanali herself. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After you give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random transmutation. Sure sounds random. So random that it will probably fail. That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected. And all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Why does everything sound so much more credible when Dunya Azad says it? Are you guys working together? So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So, how about it? Want to give it a try? Okay, one moment. Hmm... It's the moon. Paima wants to take a look too! Uh... Is it? It looks more like a pie that Paimon bit into. Hmm... Generally speaking, the moon signifies... It means... Uh, wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, I remember now. It means illusions and lies. Illusions and lies? That sounds rather ominous. Yes, but this book says that if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the beginning of a journey. It is up to you to forge your own ending. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. They say the Subzeris Festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. Dunyarzad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilu's dance of Subzeros would be just as impressive. Attention! Soldiers, fall into formation if you want any Yalda candies. It's a weird guy with a weird hat! Hey! It's Dunyarzad! Wow! wow. <laughs> Miss Dunyarzad, the children love you even more than the Yalda candies. In the few short days it took to prepare for the Sabzerus festival, the children have all grown very fond of you. Uh, um, the hallowed night of flowers. It's an honor that you know my name. <coughs> Attention! In the name of Ferris, the night of flowers, I commend you on your contributions to the glorious Sabzerus festival. All right, little soldiers. Take your Yalda candies and don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Ferris! Uh, just what is going on here? <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another Subzeris festival icon and one immensely popular with children. In the past, the actor portraying Ferris would also sit on a flower carriage. 
It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can make such wonderful memories today. As are we to you, Vihar. <laughs> oh, not at all. Oh, speaking of tradition, do you want some Yalta candies? They're a festival staple, and I happen to have some boxes readied here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Whichever one? Um, don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> that is the fun part. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, those all sound pretty good. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Huh? What's up with those two flavors? Oni kabuto is a little spicier than lizard tail. Tanyarzad, you, you tried them before? I also believe in your intuition. Great! These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Attention! That's unfortunately Lizard Tail. The Sunsetia flavored candy was in box number four. How about this? The most important thing is that everyone has a good time at the festival. So please, take both boxes. Really? Thanks a lot, Night of Candies! It's Night of Flowers, not Night of Candies. <laughs> Paimon really wilted the carriageless Night of Flowers. They all basically sound the same. We got our candy, so let's keep going. Oh, uh, actually, I just remembered that I left something behind. Um, since you're here, can you come with me to get it? Dunyarzad, you probably forgot because you're so excited about the Sub-Zero's festival. <laughs> uh, how embarrassing. Too late. Who knew the little lady was such an early riser? I know, right? Hey, wait a minute. Boss, isn't that her? Oh, that most certainly is. We're in luck. She's walking right into our clutches. I don't believe the Homayanis hired you. <laughs> That's right. We haven't received any of their mora, but I wonder how much the Homayanis would shell out to get you back. They're a gang of kidnappers! Traveler, hurry and protect Dunyarzad! Hey, did you scumbags even consider that the Homayanis might have hired a merc that outclasses you? Your... Dia! Dear the Flame Mane, no wonder we mercs haven't heard anything about you for so long. You sold your unruly mane to the highest bidder. Don't speak so disrespectfully. My family started working with her as gratitude for her past kindness to us. Don't worry about it, my lady. Just some friendly banter between mercs. One punch and those rabid dogs will expose themselves for what they really are. <laughs> Aren't your claws all dull by now? Don't get too cocky! Traveler, take Miss Dunyarzad to a safe location. No! We're gonna stay and help! There's too many of them! Mm, you're right. All right, fine! Please be careful, Dia. Don't waste your time worrying about me. This is my job. Look out for yourself. After I've wiped the floor with them, I'll go find you all. Dear 
Shahrazad. Are you okay? You look a little pale. Are you in shock? Uh, yeah. I'm fine. My body always reacts like this whenever I exert myself too much. You sure you're okay? I'll be fine after some rest. I'm more worried about Dia. After all, none of this would have happened if I had... Yeah! Don't worry. My lady, traveler, found ya. Dia! You took care of them so fast! Any more of them? Or rather, did anyone follow you? Dia, your arm! Oh, this? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Normally, they wouldn't have been able to land a hit on me at all, but I'm still getting used to this new greatsword. Please, let me take a closer look. Come on, it's nothing. Us mercs aren't as fragile as you think. Hold on, you said something about a new greatsword. Uh, what happened to the one you were using before? Uh, about that. Well, I sold it, because I was low on Mora. Stuff like this happens every now and then. It can't be. The anonymous donation that was used for the venue's final round of preparations? <laughs> uh, hey, Miss Dunyarzad, I, I wasn't trying to make you cry, and... I'm not gonna lose my commission because I made my employer cry, am I? <laughs> okay, making your employer cry won't affect your commission, but... Selling your weapon without permission and getting hurt? I'll have to reevaluate your performance. <laughs> You're so unreasonable, my lady. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dia. Don't be like that. I get embarrassed really easily. <coughs> Are you feeling unwell again, Dunyarzad? My lady, your condition. Traveler, can you take her somewhere to rest? I'll truly. I'm sorry for the trouble, everyone. few moments and I'll be good to go. I didn't realize you were concerned about it. I guess I shouldn't continue to keep it a secret. I was actually born with Elazar. It's terminal now. Can't believe it's Elazar. Oh, uh, you've already heard of Elazar. In that case, you probably know about its severity. Sumero's current medical advancements still haven't been able to find a cure. The disease's progression can only be delayed through environmental therapy. Dunyarzad. There's no need to be sad. I've always lived with Elazar and I came to terms with it a long time ago. Compared to the simple fact that I'm afflicted with this, its effects on my life have been much more painful. I know that my family loves me dearly. They've done all they can to provide the best environment for me so that I can live for that much longer. However, I know I will one day succumb to this. Did you know? Before I ran away from home this time, the world outside of my home didn't even know that I existed. Since I was a child, all I could do was sit on my bed and stare at everything outside of my window. I'm sure my family's worried and disappointed in me for running away, but I... I just didn't want to have any regrets. I wanted to meet other people, 
To me, there's nothing more beautiful than being able to meet and speak with others. Not to mention the incredible time spent preparing for the festival, the joy on everyone's faces here, and all the support I've received from friends like Dia. This way, when my final day does arrive, it will be less sorrowful. At the very least, many people will remember that I once existed in this world, right? Uh, as long as you don't forget Paimon, Paimon also won't forget about you. Uh, no, even if you forget Paimon, Paimon will still remember you. <laughs> oh, thank you too so much. I apologize for the depressing conversation. This is, this is out of character for me. To be honest, Lesser Lord Kusanali gave me the courage to do all of this. If it weren't for her encouragement, I wouldn't have thanks. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Oh, right! Isn't it almost time? Huh? Almost time for what? Isn't the dance of sub -Zeros about to begin? It's the part of the festival that I've been looking forward to the most. Nilu will recreate that legendary scene with her most splendid dancing. And the sub -Zeros festival will conclude amid everyone's applause and blessings. And with that, my wish will also... And what are we waiting for? Let's go to the stage! Yeah, we should still make it in time. Were you not aware that the law prohibits this type of performance from taking place without prior permission? Over there! Someone's yelling at Nilu! I think I just saw the Academia's Grand Sage. Why is he here in person? But the dance of sub -Zeros is one of the key parts of the sub -Zeros Festival. If we can't perform it... The sub -Zeros Festival... The law also prohibits the private hosting of large-scale religious festivals. Only the Academia can host such an event. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? The Academia was originally responsible for the sub -Zeros Festival. But they failed this responsibility for many years. I need to speak with them. This is a hard pill to swallow, but... You're right. Things would only get worse. Art. Dance. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such frivolous and meaningless activities in this land of knowledge and reason? Our Archon created the utopia that is Sumeru City for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth, while people like you wish to defile it. No. I believe that our Archon never rejected the arts. Even the Goddess of Flowers dedicated a dance to her. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will announce it to the public later via the Akasha. Understood. I will inform him when I return. Hmm. The sub -Zeru's Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunya 
Shirzad. <sighs> you all saw that just now? The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. Yeah. Let's go somewhere the Academia can't find us and perform there. Ah, uh, but how do we let everyone know? And what about the atmosphere on the stage? Or we could get people to block them off so they can't interrupt the performance. Ah, uh, no. They just threatened to investigate the organizers. If we were caught... Nilu, it's all right. Don't worry about it. But you've been looking forward to the dance of sub zero so much. And I know how important this festival is to you. I don't want you to have any regrets. It's okay. Seeing you care this much about my feelings is more than enough. It would be too risky to continue the sub zero festival at this point. I don't want to get everyone in trouble. If you say so. But... You can sneak out for the next sub zero festival, right? We'll make sure the next one is a smashing success. The next one. Yes. Okay. It's a promise. It will be a smashing success. Paimon can't believe this is how things turned out. Those heartless geezers. It really is okay. There's nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Still, I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilu's dance. <sighs> a lot happened today. It's a shame the festival ended the way it did. Nilu and Dunyarzad promised to make the next sub Zero's festival a success. But Dunyarzad is running out of time. Yeah... Oh. All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project has entered its most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from... Not at all. I arrived early. Uh, you seem kinda tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Sure! Uh, Traveler? Why are you just standing there? Let's get going! Food over that way. Let's go take a look. This is a stall offering foods from the Hoft Mewa feast. You are quite well informed, Miss. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Actually, what is the Hoft Mewa feast you mentioned just now? It's one of the sub festival's traditions. People used to set their tables with seven different foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. These appear to be in the form of the moon. Really? Paimon thought it looked like some kind of food. 
Hmm. The moon signifies... Hmm. It's escaping me for now. Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, right. <laughs> it means illusions and lies. But if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. So, where to next? Soldiers, now that you have your Yalda candies, don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Varys! What's going on? Is this a play? Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another sub festival icon and one immensely popular with children. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can meet the Knight of Flowers. Oh, do you want some Yalta candies? I happen to have some boxes ready here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Uh, what's the pick? Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, how interesting! And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Ugh, why do those flavors even exist? <laughs> Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. Great! These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Ah, excellently chosen. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. Ha <laughs> ha! Paima bet you had incredible luck, and Paima was right! Huh? How's that possible? It's obviously random. Maybe we didn't sleep very well last night. Or maybe we slept too much. Oh, it, sure. Huh? Where are you going? You're just gonna walk off like that? A feeling of deja vu? Oh, Paimon knows what that is. It's when you feel like you've already experienced whatever is going on. In that case, Paimon also felt something like that today. But that's just our brains playing tricks on us, isn't it? So why'd you run here in such a hurry? So that's it! You're intentionally doing things you usually wouldn't and seeing if you still get that same feeling of deja vu! Welcome, you two! Are you here for lunch? What would you like to eat? Got it! You don't look like you're from these parts, but I gotta say, you've got good taste! <laughs> I'll give this order to the kitchen. Charcoal-baked Angelina cake? Isn't it that... that 
burn thing that didn't look tasty at all? Oh, Paimon understands what you're trying to do now. You'd never normally order something like this. That... thing? Are you really gonna eat it? Uh... isn't this... going a bit too far? that we've been here many times, even though we are regulars. Um, how about we go out again and try something else? Just can't beat the atmosphere. Hey, Dinnerzad is sitting by herself on that bench over there. Zod, we meet again. Uh, why are you sitting here all by yourself? Oh, I ran into some kidnappers just now, but thankfully Dia came to my rescue. I started to feel unwell after that, so I sat down here. Kidnappers? Oh my goodness, are you hurt? I'm okay. Dia's arm got scratched, but it isn't serious. <sighs> That's a big relief. But... Dunyarzad, you seem a little down today. It's the Subzerus Festival, and you've been looking forward to it so much! Not at all. I've always been like this. Excessive physical exertion or strong emotions tend to aggravate my illness. Besides, no matter how amazing today may be, it is but a single day. After however many more days, my time will come to an end. quite follow you, and Paimon feels like something's really got you down right now. It really is fine. I don't mind. Huh? Did something happen? Dunyarzad, have you ever felt deja vu? You know, like when you've already experienced something that's happening right now? Deja vu? No. But my days have been the same for years now. Even if I were feeling deja vu, I suppose I would already be used to it. Oh, Paimon sees. Then, is it only the two of us? It's almost time. Huh? Time for what? Nilu's Dance of Subzerus is about to begin. Uh, let's go. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will publicly announce it later through the Akasha. Understood. 
I will inform him when I return. <sighs> the Sub Zero's festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Zod, the Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. It's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. But you've been really looking forward to this. I don't want you to have any regrets. It truly is unfortunate, but I don't want to cause trouble for anyone. Didn't the Grand Sage say that he might investigate the organizers? True, but... Uh... Well, okay. We'll just have to try again next year. The next festival. I probably won't be around by then. Wait, what did you just say? Uh, no, nothing. I'll be heading back to rest. Thank you for your help, everyone. Paimon can't believe what those heartless geezers did! Also return and get some sleep. So, in the end, you still couldn't figure out what that deja vu feeling was all about? Hmm. Maybe it really was because of exhaustion. Here. That's why Paimon stopped thinking about it halfway through the day. <sighs> then, how about we settle in and get a good night's sleep? For now, we can chalk things up to exhaustion. We can do more thinking tomorrow. Observing a modest drop in the output of Nyana energy, but values still remain with Continue to monitor the variances in the data, and find the cause as soon as possible. <sighs> Why does Paimon feel so tired after so much sleep? Uh, anyway, we should go meet Dunyarzad right away. Not at all. I arrived early. Huh? Paimon thinks you sound kinda tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Uh, shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Great idea! Let's get going! Traveler? It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can enjoy the sub -Zero's festival. Oh, are you interested in Yalda candies? I have some boxes of candy here. Pick whichever one you want. Hmm, not much of a choice. All these boxes look the same. <laughs> it's not that simple. 
Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Mmm, they all sound pretty tasty. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Huh? What were those last two? Mm, she'll help me choose. Paima wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Oh, -ho, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Oh, congratulations. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. flavor was in each box. What? She was right about all of them? That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? This is way too freaky. Tell us what's going on. Since when did you get Powers. Traveler? Hey, where are you going? What's going on? Did you see something? Us leaving Dunyar aside without letting her know is kind of rude, you know. Traveler? already know that this isn't your first sub -Zero's festival, don't you? I'm sure you already know how to use this. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? You should use it too, Paimon. Uh, you, you know Paimon? Seems kind of scary. 
sketchy, but Paimon feels like this is what we should do. Yes? As for an explanation, you two received the blessing of Dendro. And you also have special, sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyarzad you were just with is different from the first Dunyarzad you met. That first Dunyarzad is in front of you right now and... She doesn't have a lot of time left. <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Oh yeah, I'm Nahida. Good. You passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories, and you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait. Please don't tell Paimon even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. This cycle is called a samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside a one-day samsara. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your minds. I don't know how you'd be after that. I can only give you surface level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. Her illness gets worse after each Sub-Zero's festival. If we can break out of the samsara, I might be able to save her. But as things are right now, she is just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. All I can do is raise a gale to delay her fall. You sure love to use weird analogies. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. Okay, so, with what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? What's happening right now seems to have happened before. <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I need to... My mind feels... The moon... The moon elude... Grand... Grand Sage said... If our... I... I... Time loop. 
given similarly wrong answers in the past. A pity. Still the wrong answer? Paimon thought that made a lot of sense. It feels like time's just repeating itself. A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. Unfortunately, I can't give you any more hints. <coughs> Junior is odd. The Subzerus Festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. Let's think about our current situation. To save Dunyarzad, we have to escape the samsara of the Subzerus Festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. The truth. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so we must have missed something, right? Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times, but let's go talk to people again. It's more productive than sitting here and scratching our heads. Why don't we start with those stall owners? Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She... Uh, she's feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling protos here today. I haven't felt anything strange. Hmm, um, to put it another way, if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? Did you actually come back from the forest yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? Are you two daydreaming? Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> uh, he actually has a point. Is this a dream? Hmm. True. It's so weird that people here don't dream. Why is that? Anyway, if this all really were just a dream, we would have woken up a long time ago. Mm. Let's keep asking around. Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? Ooh, I knew it! I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. <laughs> You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it. Uh, help you better understand it? W well, <laughs> that isn't exactly what I excel at. So, you're admitting that you don't have a clue? Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Huh? Uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? I knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, 
illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, if you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune telling is just fortune telling. It's no good for practical problems. We haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Hmm, Paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? Yeah, if we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Hmm, at this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. Let's go find her! I'm fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing. Both of you are here. Paimon, Traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous ga- Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunyar's odd, I could have went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? You want the Traveler to take Dunyar's odd somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around. Did Paimon get that right? How did you know what I was going to say? We need to say something convincing. People in Sumer people people in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. Dia sold her greatsword to raise additional funds. And then the moon my mind fe <sighs> Tell her, Traveler! Uh. I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad, you couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? All right, so this is the situation. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic... She's Quieter than usual, uninterested in anything, and really gloomy. Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench over there. My lady, are you... Angry? <sighs> All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Dunyarzad isn't completely safe here.
thought I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where and who are you talking to? Huh? Uh, I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here. Hold on. Over there. Is that? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Miss Dunyarzad, she's... She's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her condition's really bad. And she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I... Can sense her aura. I... <clears throat> There are also lingering feelings of something like regret, or disappointment. What happened? Do you believe us now? The sub -Zero's festival has been repeating itself! So, you think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the sub -Zero's festival as a sick joke. You have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia Sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. A Gnosis could do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people? Hmm, wait. I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for, but... Compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. What do you think? People in Sumeru... <sighs> that doesn't sound right. Okay. <sighs> I'm... You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the Desert Dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, Knowledge always comes at a price. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. This hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. 
And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Yeah. I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. Mark my words. When this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. How does everyone feel? Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal. The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Did you hear that? I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals. Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But... We cannot lose all of our progress. remembers everything! <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. We definitely took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? confirm one thing. The Akasha definitely has it wants is everybody's wisdom. It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about yourself. Hmm. I guess... I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. Ah, there you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? You... you didn't get hurt this time! Huh? What do you mean, this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. Shh! How did you...
you know about my greatsword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't tell Miss Dunier's ad. So Tia's lost her memories after all. Anything strange? You already know that I got a new greatsword. Hmm, if I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so familiar. It's as if I've already used it to fight a countless number of battles. You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does? That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? Yeah! Paimon's feeling really hopeful! Oh, you're right! Earlier in the Samsara, something like this would have never happened! I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... So you want us to take Dunyarzad somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? How did you know what I was gonna say? Can you read minds? Uh, uh, forget it. Go and do your thing. Time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey! What kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub zeros festival. Okay! Paimon's brain is already shut down. <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. Uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. Is that so strange? Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words! You were sounding kind of smart just... Yeah. Even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Uh, let's go back to our room. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day! Nahida! You already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Samsara? Why did you tell us? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. Paimon thought that Duke Duke did that! Uh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Uh, Paimon's 
splattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahira's talking about confusing stuff again! Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler... Did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? Mercenaries rely... All our memories of... Hmm. Oh! Then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories! That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the Sub-Zero's festival hasn't happened yet. It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before. But muscle memory can't be erased. That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense. Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's go! There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Oh, that works! What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right, then. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it? Yes! Your memory's being erased every day! Then I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why do you think that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus Festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used? The money we spent, the food we ate. Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. Right! 
great. They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything. It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? <sighs> you two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. Hyman can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. This is it. Huh? This is a wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days' worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style. And even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Really impossible? <gasps> what if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Whew, I hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. Well, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Yep, that's true. So... Strange? Paimon feels like... Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city! Paimon can't believe it! Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just... How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. Nahida, we're back! You're back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have... Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. We did? But we don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. 
It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Yep. Something here is definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Our memories are back! Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another mess. Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Sub-Zerus Festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Traveler, you should be missing two days worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. Okay, let's go! Why can't we leave the city? What is the academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> it looks like the Academia already announced the lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? B but... What if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then... Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but... We've always been together. Okay. Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. And please, be careful. Waited for you for hours and hours at the city. 
calm down. She's here now. I don't think she understood what you were saying. <laughs> Paimon doesn't care! Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay! Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day! <gasps> okay. Paimon will forgive you. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world! Okay, Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Hmm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... ...disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of... I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Something like... a message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that. Uh, I'm... I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking! Done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? I made some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try! At least we're taking the initiative now. Let's go then! Let's expose those sages! Uh, Alright. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But... Time on still it. Okay! See you tomorrow, Traveler! That covers everything that's happened so far! <sighs> yes. Although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay. Now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Sabzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty. Except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. That's one heck of an info dump! It 
sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls. But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside. That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. <sighs> These spaces have been disappearing, one after the other. Absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Was that space actually... <sighs> that doesn't... All the... <sighs> my, my impression is that... Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the sub festival, also disappears. And we're taken to the next day. Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow. The Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Hey! Where are you going? Do you want some alone time to think? <sighs> All right then, Paimon won't disturb you. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paimon wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth!
You're back. I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from... <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? You've already... Ex <sighs> the moon... <sighs> People... Already experienced. We are all in a. <sighs> People in Sumeru think they don't dream, but the truth is the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when she was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. It is the man. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the fort. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions, and the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Rukutavada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the samsara? <sighs> Those spaces kept disappearing. <sighs> Grand Sage. <sighs> My mom. <sighs> We've already ex. <sighs> Those dream. Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha, and so it continues. So. This is like a dream factory, and the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I?
Now that I... Hmm. They say... <laughs> so you know this. Uh -huh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <laughs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you at all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. <laughs> Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? <sighs> Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the Samsara tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey! What's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way! Are... Are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it! Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just, what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarzad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarzad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarzad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. You know, speaking of which... The old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad.
To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzeru's festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind. And the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me... Uh, during this time... I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Naringo! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. Paimon's oh. still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the Sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Huh. That's true. Plus, the Sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris the Knight of Flowers is a symbol of the whole Subzeru's festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? <laughs> 